This is episode 142, How a Dump Truck Taught Me Compassion for My Father. One day I was driving home from a recovery meeting where we'd been talking about some pretty deep shit. And I pulled onto my street and got behind a dump truck that had two stickers on the back. On the left side, there was a sticker pointing to the left that said, passing side. And on the right side, there was a sticker pointing to the right that said, suicide. When I saw that sign, I had this flood of memories from when I was 16 years old. And these are memories that did not come up in any of the times that I had done the steps in the last few years before this memory. So the flood of memories were from when I was 16 and I was so new at driving that I didn't yet know that 18 wheeler trucks often can't take a right turn from the right lane. The side referred to on the dump truck as suicide. I came up behind an 18 wheeler at a stoplight where you could only turn left or right. There was no going straight and I was going to turn right. So I got in the right hand lane. I didn't realize the truck was also going to turn right, turn right. And when the light turned green, the driver started to turn right and I froze. I was so shocked that I froze in place and it never even occurred to me to honk the horn. That's how frozen I was. It started crunching my car and luckily there was somebody in the passenger side of the truck who realized what was happening and stopped the driver from proceeding. The car I was driving was my father's car because I worked for him at Nangles Pharmacy and I was out on a delivery for the pharmacy. When I called him to tell him what happened, he fucking screamed at me. Now here I was completely traumatized because I came very close to getting crushed to death by an 18 wheeler. I had frozen in shock from the situation. Now this memory that came to me that day as I pulled behind the dump truck on my street and as it came flooding back, a whole bunch of emotions and chemicals came flooding through me. So I pulled over to the side of the road, which by the way, is quite notable. I took care of myself by pulling over on the side of the road. I know for a fact that if this had happened before recovery, I would have just powered through it and kept driving home since I was so close. I was on my street and maybe four minutes from home. But at this point, I had enough recovery behind me that I knew I needed a moment and I gave that to myself. So that was new behavior. And as I sat there on the side of the road, another memory came to me from another car accident I had at age 16. I was driving around a corner and as I got around the corner, there was a car on my side of the road and I swerved. My driver's side tail end hit their driver's side tail end and it ended up being a three car accident because there was a car behind them that crashed into them. Now miraculously, nobody was hurt even though there were nine teenagers between the three cars. When my dad got on the scene, he fucking screamed at me. I tried to explain that I came around the corner to find a car on my side of the road and it wasn't my fault. And he said, Jesus Christ, Barbara, there must have been something you could have done. And I was like, uh, yeah, dad, there was. I swerved. And if I hadn't, we'd probably all be dead. Now, in both of these instances, I was traumatized from the brush with death, the loud noise of the metal crunching and crashing, and being a new young driver. And both times he fucking screamed at me. And then another memory came to me as I sat on the side of the road. It was a much more recent memory from 2016. 
I was only in recovery for a year when I had shoulder surgery and it was just really, really painful and it really screwed me up. It screwed me up psychologically, physically, mentally, emotionally, psychically. I was a mess. It didn't help that I was in the middle of step four in my first 12-step recovery program and I was in the process of hitting bottom in my substance program. It was just a fucking shit show. And in fact, I ended up going back on medication for my mental health as a result of this whole episode. Well, anyway, my father, who is a pharmacist by trade, screamed at me over the phone from North Carolina because, get this, I was taking ibuprofen and not a leave. And I was like, Jesus Christ, I'm a fucking 53-year-old woman and my dad is yelling at me. And not only that, he's yelling at me because I'm taking something that's not an extended medication and I have to take it multiple times a day. Well, here's the thing. I had a bottle of 500 ibuprofen in the closet at my house, but I didn't have any Aleve and I couldn't drive. And I was like, uh, yeah, dad, I'm just taking what I have. So perhaps you're noticing a theme here. I'm suffering and my dad screams at me. Now, my entire life before recovery, I explained this kind of behavior by him by saying he's a dick. That's how I explained it. He's a dick. That's why he does that. But this day, when I was pulled over on the side of the road on my street, I knew that the reason that he yelled at me was because that's all he was capable of doing. I think partly because that kind of thing was probably done to him when he was growing up and partly he did it because the only emotion my father had available to him was anger. He wasn't able to have other emotions like fear or anything like that. He wasn't able to say to me like a mature, caring adult might say, I was scared that something might have happened to you. Or I was scared that you could have gotten hurt. Or maybe even I'm sorry I couldn't protect you. He simply couldn't do that. None of that was available to my dad because he grew up in a dysfunctional family just like I did. This shit is intergenerational. I wasn't able to really see that kind of stuff until I went through the process of recovery, which really gave me an enormous amount of compassion for my father. And that day on the side of the road on my street, I realized all these things. When he yelled at me about taking the wrong medication, I was brand new in recovery and I didn't have any compassion for my father yet. I was still explaining his behavior by saying he's a dick. In fact, when I talked about that in therapy, my therapist said, you know, if your dad really wanted you to have some leave, he could have sent it to you in the mail. And I was like, damn, there is an idea. And then she said something else that absolutely blew me away. She said, you know, he could have even sent you flowers or maybe even a card. And I was like, what? I couldn't wrap my mind around the idea that my father could have sent me flowers. Honestly, it's still mind boggling to me to think about the idea of my father sending flowers to me. And it's kind of mind boggling to me that it's mind boggling to me because it's not like I've never gotten flowers. In fact, I got two bouquets of flowers as I recovered from shoulder, shoulder surgery, but not from my dad. So it's not like the idea of having flowers sent to me is foreign, but the idea that my father might send me flowers was just insane. It would just never happen. 
And that is how deeply entrenched the patterns of dysfunction in my family are. That a seemingly normal thing like sending someone flowers as they recuperate is just inconceivable. In my family, it just wouldn't happen. It didn't happen. Well, that day when I was behind the dump truck, it taught me, or at least it all came together that day, was number one, family dysfunction is intergenerational. It is passed down from one generation to the other. And that means that my father did the best that he could. Now, don't get me wrong, it wasn't good enough, but I understand where his fucked up behavior came from. I understand he wasn't capable of saying anything like, I'm sorry you're hurt, or I'm scared you're hurt, or I'm sorry I couldn't protect you, because he wasn't capable of feeling those things. He was capable of anger. He was also capable of a lot of sarcasm. Now, the reasons I wanted to share this story is to let you know that it is possible after a lifetime of resentment against someone, including your parents, you can learn to have compassion. I learned that in recovery. One last thing I want to share. That day when I was pulled over on the side of the road, after I had all these realizations, I called a friend from recovery and I got her voicemail and I said, you don't need to call me back, but please text me after you've listened to this. So I told her the whole story. And I said, I just need to know that I've been heard. I just needed to know that someone else knew that I'd had these realizations about my father and why he did what he did. And she did that for me. She texted me after she listened to it. And I learned that in recovery too, to reach out to others when I'm having difficulty. I've learned to be connected to others. As they say, we're protected when we're connected. I had hoped that she would pick up the phone when I called, but she didn't. But it still helped because what I've learned about being connected to people in recovery is that it's often just about being witnessed, about being seen. It's not necessarily that the other person's going to do anything. They're just going to witness you. And that's why I didn't necessarily need to talk to her. I just needed to know that she heard me. Now, all these kinds of profound things are things that I learned in recovery and never before then. I was in my 50s when that happened. So, dear listener, may these kinds of profound realizations and understandings come to you as well.